Over the years, there's been many technological advancements in the world of personal computers, but none more significant than the hard drive. Now, when I was first building computers, it wasn't uncommon to have something like this as your boot drive. Now, this is a 7200 regular hard disk drive. Over the years, we've kind of evolved into a place where now many of your computers will often boot from a drive the size of a stick of gum. This is an NVMe drive, and it's about 30 times faster than its bulkier grandfather. So you can see the size comparison. It's pretty easy to see the difference there. Um, in terms of speed though, you're looking at about 100 megabytes per second read and writes on a hard disk like this. But with current NVMe technology, now this is a Gen 3 drive, we're currently up to Gen 4, but this drive will get you around 3400 and 2300 megabytes per second read and writes respectively. But what happens if we take three more of those and combine that with a PCIe adapter. So the idea here is to see if we can actually get four times the performance of a single drive by using this adapter. Let's try it out. Let's put these aside for now, and we are definitely done with this. So what this is, is a four times NVMe to ACHI PCI adapter. This comes from a brand called ZY, maybe? ZY? -Y, Z -Y. I clearly don't speak Chinese, but I will leave a link to the product page uh, below. I got it off of AliExpress for only $25. And I couldn't really pass that up because I've been looking for a reason to utilize some of the PCI lanes on my server motherboard. And this felt like a good opportunity to do that. The idea is that it can take four different NVMe drives, two on one side, two on the other, and utilize a PCI lane to give you four drives. Now there are a lot of different cards out there that take your drives and let you adapt them to a PCI lane. And most of the time they'll be in one of two modes, IT mode or IR mode. Now this card is in what we would call IT mode or initiated target mode, meaning that every drive you plug into this card will be seen independently by your system. On the other side, you have IR mode for integrated RAID. So what that does is actually does a hardware RAID on the actual device of every drive that you have on the card. So a benefit of that is that if you wanted to use um, these drives as a boot drive, uh, you wouldn't have to do any software configuration. All of your drives would be RAIDed before it is even seen by the system. Now, personally, I'd rather IT mode because I'd rather the flexibility of being able to do what I want to do with each individual drive. And if I want to raid them all together, I can definitely do that. So the idea here is to first install all the drives, uh, pass them through to a Windows VM and raid them all together in raid zero. Let's see what we can get for 25 bucks. Okay, we should probably install the drives first, right? Does this look a little bent to you guys? This is, uh, I'm gonna stop focusing on my face. It seems a little bent. But I probably should have mentioned before, these are 512 megabyte, megabyte. These are 512 gigabyte drives from Silicon Power. They are PCI Gen 3. Uh, just because that's more compatible if I wanted to use it on a different server or a different computer, um, and they're just cheaper. So let's finish installing them. Okay, here you have it. Uh, two on one side, two on the other and all that's kind of left is to install it in the server. One thing to note though, I mentioned earlier that this is essentially an IT mode, meaning that 
the motherboard will see each drive individually. Now, the only way that'll actually work is if your motherboard supports bifurcation on the PCI slot that you install this on. Now, bifurcation is taking a PCI 16X slot and turning that into four by four X slots. So if you plug this into a regular PCI by 16 slot that doesn't support bifurcation, um, it's possible that your motherboard will only see one drive. So check your motherboard manual and motherboard sites to ensure that your motherboard actually supports bifurcation and how to enable that in the BIOS before trying something like this. Okay, let's go install it. Okay, so we are back. I've installed the card into the server. Now immediately, one of my favorite parts about the server motherboard that I'm using is that it has IPMI. So what this does is allows me to interact with the server over a network connection. So I can basically do anything I want with the server in a standard web browser. Here you can see my IPMI dashboard. Now the server is off now but I can easily go to this remote control and launch the KVM so I can actually control my server and see what's going on through the video output directly in the browser. So I've already launched it over here and we are going to send a power signal. Okay, we are in our BIOS setup screen and from here we can basically do whatever it is we need to do. So the reason I'm in here now is because before I mentioned bifurcation on the PCI slot. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. I just have to remember where it is. So under chipset, uh, I actually put this in slot five. So if I go to uh, PCI slot five link width, I can change this to four by four by four by four, essentially breaking down that uh, 16X slot into four separate uh, 4X slots. And it's gonna do all its rebooting, but I will see you back when I am in my Proxmox uh, web GUI. Okay, here we are in my Proxmox dashboard. So what we wanna do is actually pass through all those NVMe drives. Now, if we did this correctly, we should see four separate NVMe drives or PCI um, controllers we can pass through. So if I go to hardware, add, PCI device, I should see some kind of, huh, I don't know what 51 is. This could be it. So let's try it. Okay, click start. And it looks like it is not going to start up. <sighs> okay. And yeah, we are getting IO error, IO error, IO error while writing super block. Okay, after doing some troubleshooting, um, I can't seem to get the actual PCI card passed through. I can't seem to get past this failed to set APST feature error that I keep getting. So we're gonna go a different route and it shouldn't be an issue, but instead of trying to pass through the actual PCI card to the DM, we're just gonna pass through the drives themselves directly to the VM. So what I've done is I actually went in and used Proxmox's official uh, guide for passing through a physical disk to a virtual machine. And it's extremely simple. Um, you just go in and specify which device or which disk ID you wanna pass through and it's one line of code essentially that you have to run um, it's fairly straightforward, and then that device will be seen by the VM. So luckily, if we go into our server and down to disks, you'll see that at least the host is seeing all of my drives. Here you can see all four of the 500 gigabyte NVMe drives. Now I've already run the configuration for all four drives to pass them through to my Windows VM. So you can see here, one, two, three, four, uh, SCSI pass-throughs. And now if we go to start the VM, we should not see any errors. Perfect. Okay, so that will boot up and I will remote into that server. Okay, so here we are in Windows and by default, 
I don't believe they will be set up and formatted now. So if, so if you look in here, you'll see that only my local drive exists. So what you're gonna to wanna to do in Windows is actually create a striped volume. And it's pretty simple to do. Um, you're gonna go back to your disk management and what you're gonna to wanna to do is click on one of your disks and right click in the gray area and go to new striped volume and click next. And it's gonna ask which disks you want to use for that striped volume. So we're gonna to wanna to add all those disks next. I'm gonna click next. We're going to assign that to E. We're gonna call this RAID zero. Next, finish. So right now it's saying it's gonna convert them all to dynamic disks, which is fine. You could have done that before, but Okay, so we wait for it to format. Okay, so it's finally done formatting and that took way longer than I thought it would. But here you can see, um, it looks a little bit different, but here all of them are dynamic now, which is why they're green and they are finished formatting and marked as healthy. So if we go into our Windows Explorer, you will see it looks pretty similar. So let's go ahead and run the test and right off the bat we should see an increased speed okay much better all right we're going to go ahead and let this finish and when we come back we will look at the results okay it is done running and we have some interesting results uh, you can see clearly that our read speeds on the random reads went way up and you can tell definitely from the write speeds that we didn't really increase that much. Now, whether this is a factor based on the PCI card itself or with how Windows handles the striping of the drive or the way Crystal Disk Mark actually writes the data, um, there's many factors that can go into it. But the fact that we're seeing an increase in performance after striping the drives together is definitely a positive. But I don't really care to use those four drives in RAID 0. My use case for this card was actually to use all four of the drives independently. The fact that I can add four more NVMe drives off of a single PCI slot is extremely beneficial. So what I wanna do now is actually pass all four of them directly through to my TrueNAS server and separate those drives into separate caching disks. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, we are back and you can see that I am now in my TrueNAS VM and we have done the same thing. We have taken those drives away from my Windows VM, and now we are passing them directly through to my TrueNAS VM. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my TrueNAS VM up. Here we are in my TrueNAS dashboard, and you can see we've allocated 60 um, gigs of RAM. Uh, we have two main hard disk pools, so here is one. This is four 12 terabyte drives. That is my main one. And then we also have my one that I use for Plex, which is two six terabyte ones. Now, right now, neither of them have cache drives, but if I go into storage and disks, you can now see that we have one, two, three, where's the fourth one? Uh, oh, four. So we can now use those as cache drives. And the cool thing about cache drives is that um, you can add them and take them away from a pool without having to do any moving of actual data. It's non-destructive. So to do that, we can simply pick a pool. I'll do my Plex one first. And then you go down to add VDEVs. So right now it's gonna ask uh, what kind of VDEV do you wanna do? And there's a lot that goes into caching and logging, the two separate types of kind of caching you can do with high-speed drives. Now, there's a lot of forums and a lot smarter people that know a lot more about ZFS that can answer uh, this information better uh, about the differences and when to use what. Unless you have a low amount of RAM, you probably don't wanna use an L2 ARC 
cache drive. The log file, on the other hand, can definitely speed up writing to the drives. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna choose a log and we are gonna pick DA1, DA2. And down here, you can choose whether you wanna stripe your disks or if you want to mirror them. So you can see when we had it selected to stripe, it's saying a stripe log VDEV is highly discouraged and will result in data loss if it fails. But to play it safe, we will change it to mirror and that error goes away and everything is happy. Okay, so the next we are going to want to add a VDEV to my other pool. So when we go back to dashboard, you'll see the pools. On here, here's our four by 12 terabyte. You can see two data VDEVs and one log VDEV, which is a mirror of two of our NVMe drives. And you'll see very similarly on our two times six terabyte pool, one VDEV and one log VDEV, which is again, a mirror of two NVMe drives. So overall, I am pretty happy with my purchase, it was $25. And the main thing was that it allowed me to take four high speed NVMe disks and pass them directly through to my TrueNAS virtual machine while only taking up a single PCI slot. But for $25, um, I really don't think you can beat that. Um, I'd strongly recommend this. If you're looking to do something similar like passing through large amounts of NVMe drives to virtual machines, um, that card is pretty solid for that purpose. That's all, I will leave a link in the description below to the card that I got off of AliExpress. Um, if you're interested, go pick one up. If you like this video, be sure to drop a like, comment below if you have any different PCI NVMe cards that you're using and what kind of performance you're getting off of that. I'd be interested to see what you guys are doing at home with that. That's it. Uh, until next time, I will see you guys in the next video.